So moving forward now, let's see what are the goals of dimension reduction. Basically, we achieve three goals via PCA. The first goal is by reducing dimension, it becomes computationally effective. Then the second goal is it prevents overfitting. And the third goal is it reduces multicollinearity as PCs are independent of each other. So these are the three goals that are achieved through principal component analysis. Now let's see what are the steps involved in PCA. But before that, we need to go back to our basic maths. We will see what is eigenvectors and eigenvalues that is at the core of PCA. So let's understand what are these. Eigenvector is a vector whose direction remains unchanged when a linear transformation is done. So for a square matrix A, an eigenvector and eigenvalue make the equation shown here as true. A here is a square matrix. Now what is a square matrix? A matrix with equal number of rows and columns is a square matrix. So if this equation holds true, then V and lambda are eigenvector and eigenvalues respectively. But the question is why do we use eigenvectors? So as we know that matrices are used to store large information, but it could be computationally slow. So what we do is we multiply eigenvectors with matrix such that it satisfies the above equation. Now multiplying the vector with a matrix results in a vector that approximates the matrix. So the idea of eigenvector here is that we get a vector which is computationally efficient than a matrix and we also are able to approximate the whole matrix. Now eigenvalues is the scale of the stretch. So 1 means no change, 2 means doubling in length and minus 1 means pointing backwards. So here you can look at the picture. We perform a linear transformation and now you may think of eigenvalues as the stretching, compressing and xy line chart without changing their direction. Also we can see here that eigenvector is a vector that does not change direction in a transformation. So I hope with this we have got some clarity about eigenvector and eigenvalues. Now we will not be calculating it manually, but as I said earlier, it is at the core of PCA. Hence it was important that we revisit our elementary mathematics and just refresh our memory about eigenvector and eigenvalues. Now let's see what are the steps involved in PCA. So the first step in PCA is to take the matrix of the independent variable X and standardize the data into Z matrix. Then take the matrix Z and transpose it and then multiply it by Z. This Z transpose multiplied by Z will give us the covariance matrix of Z. Now calculate the n orthonormalized that is perpendicular eigenvectors and their corresponding eigenvalues of Z transpose multiplied by Z matrix which is basically the covariance matrix and name them as V1 v2, v3 up to vn and in the same way name their corresponding eigenvalues as lambda1, lambda2 up to lambda n. Now v1, v2 up to vn are called as principal components and these vectors of eigenvectors is sorted from highest to lowest and hence we can name it as v star. Now in the next step, we calculate Z star as Z into V star. Now this new matrix Z star is a standardized version of X, but now each observation is a combination of the original variables, where the weights are determined by the eigenvectors. And each column of Z star is independent of one another. Then finally, we will decide how many features to keep and how many to drop. Now to decide this, there are basically three methods. We can either decide based on the requirement, say we need our results in 2D, hence we'll only keep two PCs. Or we can decide based on the total target variation of PCs, say 80% is our target variation. 
so add proportion of variation explained by pc1 pc2 pc3 up to pcn and when 80 percent is reached then stop and select those number of principal components or calculate the cumulative proportion of variance explained by each feature and then plot a scree plot and select where elbow forms. So this is how you can select number of principal components.